The sensor's purpose is to record any machine's active working time. It does this by sensing the electrical field on a petrol or electrical machine. Once the machine is turned off, the sensor will start uploading the captured data to the Husqvarna Fleet Services cloud. The sensor connects to the cloud via Bluetooth through a gateway app. The gateway can be installed on a smartphone or a tablet. There are two applications you need to know. The first one is the Husqvarna Fleet Services mobile app that will help you manage your machines, register sensors, upload data in field and capture the last known position of your assets. And the second one is the Husqvarna Fleet Services Gateway app, which is limited to data upload and inventory control. We advise to have a dedicated tablet with the Gateway app running in the workshop where your machines are stored. In this way, data will be uploaded automatically whenever machines arrive after a shift. The sensor has three ways of communication. Antenna for sensing electrical field, Bluetooth for sending data, and the LED to understand what is happening with the sensor. The sensor consists of an enclosure with removable lid, the sensor, anti-vibration pad and a battery. Each sensor also comes with pads for mounting and a sticker that you can type the machine's name on. You should also have this key. It will help you in opening the enclosure lid, removing the sensor and the battery. First, you need to take the sensor out of its enclosure. Unscrew the cover with our special tool and remove the sensor. Insert a new 3-volt battery. The LED now indicates it's waiting to be configured by showing three short blinks every third second. Start the Gateway app on your smartphone or tablet. Make sure the Bluetooth is turned on and your device has a stable internet connection. Now the app will automatically connect the sensor to the Husqvarna Fleet Services cloud and set it up with the correct date and time. When connected, the LED will show two short blinks every second indicating ongoing configuration. When ready, the sensor will start blinking every fifth second. Now it is activated and ready to be registered and installed on a machine. It's absolutely necessary to register the sensor to a specific machine, otherwise the data won't be traceable. This is done in the Husqvarna Fleet Services mobile app. When you are prompted to register a sensor, do it by scanning the QR code on its back. Now the data collected by the sensor will be linked to that machine. Now it's time to find the best possible location on your machine to mount the sensor. Make sure the sensor is configured and paired. Mount an anti-vibration pad on the sensor. Carefully press the sensor into place. Align this sensor slot with the enclosure slot. You may have to push hard, but that's okay, since the sensor is quite durable. The sensor has an antenna that should be directed towards the electrical field coming from the motor. Start the machine and hold the sensor close to the electrical field. On a petrol machine, it's best to place the sensor so that it can detect the electric current going through the thick cables to the spark plug. It will blink once for every detected ignition spark. Make sure not to cover the antenna with your hand, since this will weaken the signal. You can check the signal strength by moving the sensor around and observe the LED diode.
Also consider the position so it does not disturb handling when working. On an electrical machine, you may find several spots for good sensor readings, but try to find a mounting position that doesn't interfere with the machine handling. If you have found a good position, it will start to blink once a second. When you have found the best possible position, we recommend that you mount the enclosure using pop rivets. To be sure not to damage internal parts, you may have to demount the product where you are going to drill the holes. Included in the sensor kit, there are two soft spaces to be used for vibration dampening and to fill the gap when you attach the sensor on rounded surfaces. One thin and one thick comes with each sensor. Use the thin one on flat surfaces and the thick one on rounded surfaces. The enclosure gives you two options when using pop rivets. Through the ears, or if there is a little space, you can remove the ears along these markers and put the rivets inside and behind the sensor. Carefully drill two holes in the machine cover and fasten it with rivets. If you are sure there is free space behind the machine cover where you are going to drill, we still recommend to use some kind of drill stop to prevent drilling too deep. And close the lid. Remember the sticker. Before you put it on, make sure to clean the surface. Use a water-resistant pen and write a name by which you can easily identify the machine. When you mount the sensor using the holes on the inside, you do it like this. You can always move a sensor from one machine to another. However, if you need to switch the sensor from an electrical to a petrol machine or vice versa, be sure to reset the sensor by reinserting the battery. This will make the sensor automatically detect if it's mounted on a petrol or an electric product. When the battery is removed, you need to wait a couple of seconds to let the sensor power down. Look at the LED and see when the blinking stops. Don't forget to activate the sensor and register it to the new machine. While the machine is in use, the sensor will collect data and will not attempt to upload it via Bluetooth at the same time. With a petrol machine, the sensor starts to send data if connected after one minute from the moment the machine is turned off. With an electrical machine, it can take up to 15 minutes before the sensor can start to send data. This is because electric machines are usually switched on and off more frequently compared to the petrol ones. The sensor battery will last a very long time, but we recommend that you install a new battery once a year or whenever you receive an alert about a low battery in your fleet service app.
When you see three short blinks every third second, the sensor is waiting to be configured. This happens after you have inserted a battery in the sensor. Two short blinks every second means the sensor is connected. This state indicates that the sensor is either uploading data or receiving configuration from the cloud. When the LED is on for a whole second and then off for a second, the sensor is updating its firmware. Updates will be performed automatically when new firmware is available and when the sensor is connected to the cloud. One blink every fifth second, the sensors are configured and ready to be used but have no data stored. You will see this behavior on a brand new sensor, signaling that it's ready to be registered to a machine. Make sure to do that, otherwise the collected data is of no use. Two short blinks every fifth second means that the sensor has recorded and stored data. From this state, the sensor can either continue tracking machine usage or, whenever close to a gateway, try to connect and upload what it's got. When in proximity of a running motor, the sensor will start tracking the on-time and blink accordingly. One short blink once a second indicates that it's reading an electrical machine that is active. When reading an active petrol-driven machine, you will see one short blink for every detected ignition spark.